Hey everyone! Today I'm going to be redecorating my stuffed animal room for the fall season and show you all how to make some fall or Halloween decorations. Now let's get started! Okay, so I'm going to start by making a cozy fall themed candle and I'm kind of cheating here using a battery powered tea candle but it being able to actually light up I think adds a lot to the room. And you could use a real tea candle for this that is the exact same size as this, but I would not light it because this is going to be covered in paper. So to make this look like a seasonal scented candle, I'm covering this with a strip of orange construction paper. But before adding it on, I'm going to draw a little label out on this little piece of white paper. And I'm going to make the scent pumpkin spice latte because, of course. And I'm trying to add a little decorations on the sides to really make it look like one of those candles from like Bath and Body Works. And after coloring in my design, I unfortunately kind of smeared the ink a little, but hopefully you can't see that. And now I can glue this on to the middle of this orange paper and then tape this around the outside of the candle. I forgot to mention, I made sure to cut this just so it is a little bit taller than the candle. So it's not hiding the flame, but it still has that orange glow. Now that's it for turning this basic candle into a cozy seasonal one. This is going to look amazing on the nightstand. The next thing I'm going to make is a little witch broom and this could be used as like an accessory to a Halloween costume but someone specifically requested this as like room decor so that's what I'm going to be using it for. To make this I ended up using a stick from my backyard and some dried pine needles but in case you don't have dried pine needles I tested out a method where I used some brown string and coated it with glue and then laid it flat to dry and this did work the string got stiff like the fibers of a broom but I didn't end up going with this method because I would have had to do this to a lot more string and the color just was too similar to the stick and I wanted a little more of a contrast. But you can do this if you don't have any pine needles or like straw to use. Okay, to put this all together, I'm gathering all the pine needles I collected and bundling them so all the bottoms are even. And then I could start wrapping this around the bottom of the stick, letting the pine needle stick out one or two inches. And then I'm wrapping the top of this tightly with some brown thread. Then I put glue around the thread to hold it in place. Then after letting it dry, I trimmed off that extra thread and the tops of the pine needles that were sticking out too much. And here is how it looks in the end. Ignore the mess behind me that I'm trying to cover with my hands, but I think it turned out really good. A little small, so maybe I should have used a bigger stick. Next, I'm going to be making some fall themed pillows, which I feel like are an essential part of a room makeover. So first I'm going to be making a pumpkin pillow out of a sock. So I have an old sock here and I'm cutting out probably two to three inches of the middle of it. And I would have preferred to use like an orange sock, but this gray one was all I had, so I used it. And real quick, I'm gonna make the stem by cutting out a little rectangle of brown felt and rolling it up. And once you have it as thick as you want, you can use a needle and thread to put a few stitches through the end so it doesn't unroll. I ended up making my stem too small, so I later had to add more felt around the outside. Now back to the sock piece, I actually want the inside of the sock to be the outside of the pumpkin since this is an old sock and the outside's just looking a little rough. So you want the inside of your pumpkin facing out. And now I'm going to take a needle and thread and do a running stitch along the top edge. And I tried to make these really tiny and then went around the entire thing. Here I am towards the end and once I've gone all the way around, I'm going to pull it pretty tight and then put my stem inside there. You actually want the stem face down though, so the longer side going in because what's inside is eventually going to get turned inside out. Now I'm wrapping the rest of the thread tightly around the top of this, and then to finish it off, I'm going back and forth through that entire thing with the needle, and then locking the stitch. Now I can turn this inside out, and hopefully your stem will be sticking out in the top. Now I can stuff this with stuffing, or you could just use random fabric scraps. Once it's full, I'm taking the needle and thread again, and doing a running stitch all around this bottom edge. I'm also making sure that that bottom edge is folded over so it looks nice and neat from the bottom. After going all the way around, I can pull this really, really tight. And since there's still a little opening, I'm going back and forth with my needle to close that up. Just a few X shapes. And now to make this really look like a pumpkin, I'm making the segments by pulling up the thread over the top and back to the bottom and going into the fabric as well to lock that in place. And then I can repeat doing that until I have about eight segments. You'll probably also have to go through the stem to get it right down the middle. But once I have all the segments created, I can lock my stitch by poking my needle through the bottom and then putting the needle through the loop that forms and that'll lock the stitch. Now that is it for making this pumpkin pillow. 
I made something similar in a previous video, but this one's definitely smaller and squishier. Speaking of squish, next I'm going to be making a candy corn squishmallow. And it's not super obvious that it's a squishmallow, but it could also just be a cute pillow. So I'm first taking my candy corn pattern and cutting it out of a sock, since a sock is pretty stretchy and I wanted that squishy texture. And then for the front, I'm going to be using felt, but you could just use any kind of fabric in these colors. And I didn't make a pattern for this front part, I kind of just laid the different colors on top of this first piece and then cut them to the shape they needed to be. I ended up making a pattern for this that I'll link down below because cutting these out crooked definitely doesn't help. Now I need to sew the white and orange piece together, so I'm going to flip them good side to good side and use a straight stitch to sew along this top edge. And that will really cleanly connect them, so now I can add the yellow to this. So I'm flipping the yellow good side to good side with this piece and sewing along that edge. Once that's done, I can connect this to the back piece, so I'm flipping them good side to good side and pinning them together. And now I can sew around the entire perimeter, but I'm going to leave at least one inch space at the bottom. Now I can trim off some of this extra felt and turn this inside out. Next, I can stuff this and sew the opening closed. I'm using a needle and thread so it's hopefully less obvious, and I'm doing what's called a whip stitch, so making sure that sock edge is folded over. I'm putting my needle through both open edges so the thread kind of goes over the top of both, and I can just keep doing that until the entire opening is closed. After locking my stitch, I'm pushing my needle through the middle of the pillow and cutting it off there so the thread's kind of hidden inside. But now you have a candy corn pillow, but I'm going to turn this into a squishmallow by adding a face. Not really sure if I liked it in the end because I think I made it too big, but I'm going to just paint it on with black paint. And I should have used an actual paintbrush and not just the end of the paintbrush for the smile because it was a little lopsided. But I feel like it does give him a little bit of a personality. Now that is it for this candy corn pillow or squishmallow. I wanted a ton of pillows on this bed, so I did make a few more off camera. This first one is a crochet pillow and I just did the moss stitch like what I showed in my how to make a blanket video. And once I got a square shape, I just sewed this onto some regular fabric to make it a pillow. And the second one I made is this Sherpa ghost pillow. I just cut out two ghost shapes out of Sherpa and I'll link the patterns for this below. And then I sewed on this felt mouth and embroidered on the eyes before sewing the two pieces together. But yeah, you can definitely have fun making a bunch of throw pillows. Next, I'm going to move on to some wall art. And I didn't do anything too fancy here. I just looked up this picture of like these watercolor pumpkins and tried to recreate some of them the best that I could using colored pencils. Then I just gave them a little frame by sticking them onto pieces of construction paper. Here is how they all turned out. I'm going to make sure to hang them up with alternating green and orange backgrounds. I wanted to make one more big wall art piece, so this is what I came up with. It's pretty basic, I just did a watercolor background and then wrote Hello Fall on it. And then I added a little frame with some wood grain scrapbook paper. That's it for all the wall art I made, and now I'm going to move on to the nightstand, because I'm doing a little something different for that. Originally, it was just a clear plastic top, but I'm going to replace it with this wood version I made, because I feel like it just matches better. And all I did to make this was cut out a circle of cardboard, and then cover it with some wood grain scrapbook paper. And finally, the last thing I wanted to shout out was this little pine cone I made out of two pipe cleaners. I was kind of just messing around when I made this, but I just folded it back and forth a lot, and then kind of swirled it into this shape. So if you don't have any real tiny pine cones, this is a good option to make one. Okay, now it's finally time to start decorating. Here is a before shot of how the room originally looked. I'm sorry about the lighting, but this is in the corner of my room opposite to the window, so you might be seeing my shadow a lot, but I've already taken down all the decorations and replaced the bed sheets with just like a plain white pillowcase. And now I'm replacing that old comforter with this new hedgehog one I made, and it's reversible, so I put a winter one on the other side. And I showed how to make this in my how to make a bed video, so I'll link that down below. And kind of jumping around a little, I'm adding the wooden top to the nightstand base. And of course, to decorate that, I added the pumpkin candle and the little pine cone. Then I added the little broomstick kind of next to the bottom of the bed. I wasn't really sure where to put this, but maybe I should have hung it up or something. And now to decorate this bed, it's time to add all the throw pillows. I wanted to add all the pillows to that back corner to give it kind of a different look, and this is actually the way I make my bed right now. So I started with the ghost pillow in the back since it's the biggest, then I'm adding the plain white pillows I made in the original video. 
and then I'm just arranging the rest of the throw pillows in front of those. This furry pillow was also from that first video, but I feel like it also works for fall. Now to bring in more color, I'm also adding the mini pumpkins I made in a video a few years ago. So this is just an alternate way to make a soft pumpkin. And I also had a bigger one that I put on the nightstand. And the last thing for the bed is this crochet blanket I made in a previous video. Now the last thing to add is the wall art, so I'm sticking those on with some tape. Now that is it for this fall room makeover. I love making DIY room decor and the fall seasons, so this was super fun. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and drop any last suggestions for Halloween costumes in the comments and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Bye!